Hey guys, this is Nick, and in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to measure main and rod bearing clearances using a micrometer and a bore gauge, as well as piston to wall clearances. The engine that I'm working on is a Windsor Aluminum Plant 4.6 that has been stroked to a 5.0 with an Eagle 5.0 stroker crank, rods, and Aries forged pistons. I bought this engine from a buddy. It was fully assembled. All the machine work was already done to it. I noticed some peculiar things with it, so I decided to tear it apart, and I found a lot of stuff to be wrong with it, a lot of stuff that the machine shop should have caught. So I'm going through it all now, and I'm going to take you guys along through the process of how to check everything out. This is an Eagle stroker crankshaft for my Ford 4.6 liter V8 and I'm going to give it a good little wipe down before we start doing any measuring on anything. This has already been thoroughly cleaned. Clean is one of the most important things that these parts can be before you do any measurements. So make sure that you take your time with this process and don't skip anything. I'm just at this point wiping off any dust that may have gotten on here from just sitting around overnight. Cleaning is always going to be the most important part of the process because you're going to find all of your problems during that time if you look closely enough. So you want to look for any scoring, heat marks, any sharp edges, especially on the thrust faces on the side. This is what keeps it from moving forward and back. You want to make sure that that's nice and smooth and you're just looking for anything that could either cause a problem or could potentially wear your bearings out prematurely. So before I get started, I went ahead and I made this table on Google Drive that has all of the factory specs, what they're supposed to be, so that I can write down the actual specs underneath it, make sure that they're close to each other. I have all of the main bearing specs as well, and I have this for pretty much every part of the entire engine, as well as diagrams, manuals, everything that I need to know directly from Ford in order to make sure that I do all of this correctly. All of this information came from alldatadiy.com. You pay like 20 bucks for it and you have unlimited access to pretty much all of the OEM instruction manuals which for something to this extent it's worth it. I'm using a Mitatoyo 2 to 3 inch micrometer in order to accurately read these measurements. Understand that we're taking measurements to the 10,000th of an inch so you really want to invest in some high quality tools if you want to make sure that this stuff comes out correctly. Before using a micrometer it is important to understand its anatomy. This piece right here is called the anvil. This is your lock. This is the spindle. This is the sleeve. This is the thimble, the part that turns. And then here we have a ratcheting knob and this would just be considered the frame. In order to ensure that this is going to give us accurate results, we have to zero it out. This spacer right here is two inches to the 10 thousandths of an inch and we will be using it to zero out the gauge. So what we're going to do is get the spindle in the relative ballpark. You need to use the ratchet knob to get the last bit of it out and once it clicks, that's when you know you have the right amount of tension on there. If you take a look at the zero in the thousandths place, you can see that it's not perfectly centered here, it is not perfectly centered here, and it is also not perfectly centered here. In order to fix this, we have to rotate this sleeve using this special tool. Make sure that this is in the locked position. Find the collar that the tool will slide into. Make sure you're going the right direction with it. Something I didn't specifically state earlier is that whenever you're getting close to taking the actual measurement, you got it all in the ballpark, you need to bring it home with the ratchet in order to ensure that you're putting a consistent amount of force on it every time. And you basically want to turn it until you'll hear three clicks. And this ensures that you're at the perfect amount of force to get an accurate measurement. If you use your fingers to bring it in, you may over tighten it and not get an accurate number. I just spent the last 10 minutes trying to get this absolutely perfect. The spindle's very hard to turn, so it took me a good bit of time. But as you can see, that zero's lined up perfectly. That zero's lined up perfectly. And this zero is lined up perfectly, so we are ready to go. So now that we have the micrometer zeroed out, we're going to clean it. We're going to get it to the rough estimate of the size, which should be 2.657 inches according to the manual. I'm going to give this a quick wipe down. And what we're going to do is go about 90 degrees of where these oil holes are and we're going to do our first measurement. So I'm going to get it set up. I'm going to try to get it even. And as I'm bringing this in, I'm going to slowly rock it back and forth and just try to get it centered starting to get a click and then here's where the feel comes into play. So I'm going to go past it and then come back onto it 
and I can just feel that it's just lightly grazing up against it and you kind of got to shake it, get it perfect to get it to slide through. If this was so tight that it was scratching or gouging on the way out, then that is not the accurate measurement and you almost want it to be able to fall through by itself. So that measurement is 2.657 and then we're going to come over here to the 10,000th measurement and we're going to find which one of these lines up the best. And I would say that the six lines up the best, which means that the measurement is 2.657 and six ten thousandths. So I'm actually gonna measure this three times and I'm either gonna take the average measurement of those three measurements or I'm going to get the same exact result three times, which is more of what I enjoy doing. I wanna be able to kind of get the feel to be able to recreate that same measurement three times in a row, which makes me feel very confident that that is the true measurement. So we're gonna unlock it, open it back up a little bit, bring it in slowly while wiggling it a little bit until it starts to click. Get a feel for that. All right, once again, 2.657. And on that measurement, we got five thousandths instead of six thousandths. So we're gonna measure again. And once again, we're at five thousandths. One more time. Five thousandths. So as a result of getting 2.6575 three times in a row, that's the measurement I'm going with. 2.6575, got the exact same value. One more time at a different angle. 2.6575, perfect. So now we're gonna repeat the same process for the other four crank main journals and then we're gonna go through the rod journals. So now we're finished up measuring the main crank journals. Now we're gonna measure the rod journals and I'm going to be using a one to two inch micrometer because it is about 1.89 inches. So I'm gonna zero this thing out and then we're gonna repeat the exact same process. So now that we have the outside diameters measured for both the crank and the rod journals, we're gonna measure the inside diameters of the main bearings and the rod bearings, which is going to be a larger diameter than the outside diameter of the crank. And what we're measuring is for the clearance between the two, the difference. This tool is called a dial bore gauge indicator. You can install different sized anvils in it to get the measurement that you need. Use your basic measurement skills to figure out what it is for the dimension it is that you're reading. This is spring loaded right here to allow it to fit into spaces. And what you're doing is this anvil stays constant and this piece in the back when it gets pushed in affects the measurement. So what we're going to do is set the number in our micrometer to the value that we want and then we're going to zero this out. So I have the micrometer set up in the vise and the average value that I got was 2.6575. So I have the micrometer set to 2.6575 and it is locked into place. So now I'm going to take the bore gauge and I'm gonna push up against it and I'm going to get it installed. And what you wanna do to get an accurate measurement with the bore gauge is rock it forward and back and understand that the reading that you're looking for is the minimum reading. Because think about this, if it's not perfectly centered, it's angled up a little bit, it's going to get a larger reading. The smallest reading you're ever going to get is when it's perfectly centered between the two points. So I'm going to move the anvil down, which is the side that my pointer finger is on. As I move that down, I know it's not centered. So I'm going to move it back up to where it is centered and the value is now decreasing and I'm going to keep decreasing the value until I get to the point where it changes directions. When it changes directions, that means that that value, instead of getting smaller, is now getting larger, which means it's no longer centered. So you want to find where it switches directions from smaller to larger and then set the gauge to zero at that point so that you know that this bore gauge is set up at exactly 2.6575. So I have the anvil pointed down and watch what happens as I bring it up towards center. You can see the value is decreasing. It gets to about one ten thousandth of an inch and then it changes directions. Or actually now that I've found center a little bit more, about negative two ten thousandths of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off. So now I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna twist the actual dial itself about two ten thousandths of an inch. And then I'm going to check it again to see if our smallest value is now zero. 
Perfect, so as you can see, that's the lowest point and it's set right at zero. So now that we have the dial bore gauge set to zero at 2.6575, we're going to install it in the first main bearing. All of these main bearings have been installed with the caps as if the engine was going together for real. Follow the manufacturer's torque sequence, instructions, side bolts, everything. Do not skip a single step. Clean these threads out. Make sure that it is 100% the way it's going to go together when you do it for real. If the inside diameter of these bearings was the same as the crankshaft, then when it's perfectly centered, the lowest value we'll get is zero. However, it's going to be larger. The inside diameter of this bearing is going to be larger than the crankshaft. So we're gonna get a positive value. As you can see, we have zero, negative, plus. So we're looking for something around this range. So I'm going to put the little wheels of it on and I'm gonna push down on that spring and gently bring it in. Make sure that you're not scratching anything up in the process of this. And then we're gonna rock the gauge back and forth until we find the lowest value. The lowest value that I'm finding is about 19 ten thousandths. There it is right there. And as you can see, I'm going down and now it starts increasing, I'm going up, it hits that point, then it starts decreasing again. That's how you know when you're perfectly centered. 19 ten thousandths is the clearance between the outside diameter of the crankshaft and the inside diameter of the main bearings. Something else to consider is that we set that micrometer to 2.6575. The next one is 2.6576, then 466. So, we need to take into consideration that these numbers are off by one ten thousandth of an inch over, one ten thousandth of an inch under, and we need to take that into our calculation for what the clearance is. All right, I just got done measuring all the clearances. The only problem I ran into is once I started getting to these further back ones, I didn't have as much mobility with the gauge because it had to fit with inside of the main journals. So if I was able to go in from the other side of it, if the engine was on the stand a different way, that would have helped. However, I still feel confident in the measurements that I took. And I also made sure to check after I was done that the bore gauge was still set at zero at my original measurement. And it was actually about half of a 10,000 off from where I had started. So that means that some of my measurements can be half of a 10,000 off. If you're super anal about it, you could reset it and check them all again. However, I'm not concerned about half a ten thousandth. We have larger problems to deal with. So all of these numbers look pretty good. The first three were pretty large in comparison to what the desired spec is. And then the last two were right where they need to be. However, what I did on the bearings is if you look on the bottom, there's two portions of the race. So there's this open slot in the middle. This is where the oil is provided through it through the engine block. So I measured here and here. If it's the same value, I didn't write it down. But if it was different, then I made sure to write it down. The only one that was different was number three. And it went from... 1.85 thousandths to 15 thousandths on the other side. That's a large difference in the same bearing. I'm not exactly sure if that's a problem with the bearing itself, it most likely is, or something with the main cap, the way it's squished, the way it was torqued, torqued to an improper spec, anything along those lines, but that is a concern and I am going to do something about it. So now that we're done figuring out the main bearing clearances, we're going to install all of the rod bearings torque them to spec. We're gonna place these in an aluminum jawed vise in order to prevent scratching or deforming them, torque them to spec, and then we'll measure the inside diameter. So now that we got the bore gauge set to zero for the rod bearings, we're gonna to torque these bolts to 43 foot-pounds. Make sure that whenever you torque them, you're using something like an aluminum jawed vise and where the cap splits, you do not want the jaws of the vise to be touching both sides of that because that cap's going to need to move and set down as you torque it. So you want to make sure that that split is above the jaws of the vise. Now we're going to take the connecting rod and move it up so that we can fit the bore gauge in there. Make sure you're not clamping this stuff too tight. Give it a little wipe, make sure that it's clean beforehand. So now that we're torqued to spec, we're gonna go in first perpendicular to the parting line, so straight up and down. Rock it in. And we're at about... Let's 
I'd say 18 thousandths. And then we're gonna move it 45 degrees, measure it again, say about 20 thousandths, 45 degrees the other way. And we're also at about 20 thousandths. Next, we're moving on to measuring the piston to wall clearance. This is done the same way as everything else. We're going to take our micrometer, measure the outside diameter of the piston, set the bore gauge to zero at that value, and then measure the clearance inside of the cylinders. You need to find out from your piston manufacturer where they want you to take these measurements. For example, on these Aries pistons on the data sheet, it wants you to take it 90 degrees perpendicular of the wrist pin. So right here and 1.1 inches from the bottom of the oil ring. So we're gonna take our caliper and we're gonna measure 1.1 inches from the bottom, make a little mark with our Sharpie on both sides and that's where we're going to take the measurement. The reason for this is because the piston is not the same size the whole way across. I believe that this is the widest point of it, which is what matters. So that's where we're gonna take the measurement. So now we're gonna grab the three to four inch micrometer. We're gonna go ahead and zero this out. I already did, it was off by a few 10 thousandths. So we went ahead and made our marks 1.1 inches from the bottom of the oil ring. And we're gonna go ahead and take the measurements. 3.575. All right, so I'm finishing up just giving these cylinders a wipe down. I set the bore gauge to zero inside of the micrometer at the most common number for the outside diameter of the pistons. And now we're going to take six measurements for each cylinder and we're going to find the average among those. We're going to make three measurements perpendicular to the block and then three measurements parallel with the block. The first one's gonna be about 3 8 of an inch down from the very top of the cylinder. The next one's in the middle, and then the last one will be about 3 8 from the bottom of the cylinder. Then once again, turn it 90 degrees, check the other direction. So we're gonna go ahead and gently rock this in there, move it down about 3 8 of an inch, and then we're gonna find our lowest value. So now we're gonna go down into the middle, we're going to repeat that one more time. 35 at the bottom. 